Plural noun preposition papers. One of the reasons why we make such a great emphasis on this type of format or structure is because it comes up in so many different practical ways in life. And so one of the things that you will be doing more and more is writing emails. Emails have become just a, a natural form of daily communication, really in all scope of life. Uh, if in business, you're, you're going to email. You're going to email every single day. I have to read emails. I have to write emails. And one of the things I've come to really appreciate is a nice, crisp, concise email. Unfortunately, most of the emails that I, I read uh, aren't very crisp and concise. Uh, so many emails just go on and on and on forever as though you're in some kind of, of conversation. Well, one of the things we really want to help develop and and just give you another example or sample of a plural noun proposition paper is in the email, email format. <clears throat> Remember, we, we still have the same, the, the same five step elements as, as any paper you might write, whether it's a 20 page paper or just a short little email, it, it's just the scale is a little smaller, right? And so you still have to determine the proposition or the point of your email, the point of your paper. You have to compose some kind of structure, some kind of outline so that the person reading it understands what you're reading. Uh, quite often I see that emails have like very, very important information in like the fourth paragraph of a long winded email. Well, that's how things get lost. This, this happens all the time. We wanna prepare the body so if you have certain points or specific questions that you want, you want to make sure that you're clear with that. Structure can really help. Bullet points, numbering systems, that, that's a really good way. And then write an introduction. You know, you want to go back and take a look at your email and go, does my email really make sense? And so a great introduction uh, is, is, is powerful. And then also uh, your concluding remarks. We want to formulate the conclusion. Same structure as any plural noun proposition paper would be used in, in forming an email. The other thing is you're, you're usually typing emails. And so this then is that same format and structure that you're using uh, on the computer every day anyway. So where do we begin? Again, we begin with our brainstorming. You're, you're getting ready to, to write an email. So in this example, we're going to use, it's a, an example of a student requesting an extension from a professor or from a teacher. This happens all the time. Something happens, a student just needs more time. Usually what takes place, unfortunately, is the student will not turn the paper in and then the day of or the day after go the, to the teacher and say, can I have grace? Can I have an extension? That is not the way to approach it. The way to always approach uh, whether it's business or, or an extension email, is, is just come out with it right away. And doing it beforehand will give the teacher at least a, um, you know, the, the benefit of the doubt of them thinking, no, this is really an honest uh, excuse or an honest reason. And so I'm willing to hear you out. So what do you have to say, right? And so what are your three key points? Why do you need this extension? Um, maybe there's only one reason why you need the, ex the extension, but maybe there's two or three kind of supporting um, elements behind the, the need for the extension. So you want to write those down, right? You want to write down, okay, so what are the reasons why I need an extension? Well, one, in this example, I'm just going to put out a couple. Uh, it could be sickness. Uh, one could be out of my control, right? Uh, this was out of my control. Okay, the three reasons why it was out of my control were it was, you know, my parents wouldn't allow me to get on the internet. My, my internet was down. There was an electrical shortage. Uh, the snowstorm, you know, wouldn't allow me to, to have internet access. Uh, another uh, approach might be I need an extension because there's conflicts. 
Look, I, I'm on a traveling baseball team. We're going to be out of town. This happens in college all the time. They, they go out of town for three days. They're going to miss the test. They're going to miss being able to turn things in. And so you need to email uh, that teacher or professor ahead of time so that they know, hey, these are the reasons why I need an extension, right? Um, so <clears throat> in your email, using the same format as our plural noun proposition paper, we, we want to have a simple, direct opening. Direct. I need an extension. Clear. I need a two-day extension. Concise. I need a two-day extension on my World 1, you know, paper assignment. So now as, the, as, the, as a professor, as a teacher, I know exactly what it is you're getting ready to ask me. You need a two-day extension on this paper. So many times a, a teacher, at, you know, I mean, there's five different uh, assignments and you're saying you need an, ext an extension on what? Uh, that, that isn't even due for another month. Uh, the test is tomorrow. I mean, you know, be specific, right? You know, three reasons I need an extension for assignments are, and I mentioned sickness. Here's kind of a, a nice little, little outline for you. Let's say, you know, your, your main proposition was, um, I need an extension for this assignment because... Um, of, of the snowstorm. Okay, what are the three reasons why the snowstorm affected you? What were the two reasons why being sick affected you? Give me the, the reasons why your parents affected you. See, see, see how that works? And so you have some, some really good uh, examples here of, of why you might need an extension. Uh, in the first place. And so you want to open up with a simple direct um, opening. You want, you want to be clear. You want to be concise. But remember, your closing is powerful too. You, you've been clear. I need a two-day extension on my World War I paper. You've given some supporting evidence because of the snowstorm. I didn't have access to, uh, to, the, to the library because we couldn't get up the, the, the hill. My internet was down. I had no way of completing the assignment as prescribed by you. But now you're going to close it. So here's the deal. Be winsome. Be persuasive. Right? Win the verdict. This is how our plural noun proposition elements come into play. Because in a plural noun proposition paper, you're trying to win. You're trying to prove a point. You're, you're trying to, to get somebody to kind of change their mind. So as a teacher... You're trying to get me to change my mind so that I give you that extension. So be humble. Uh, let them know, hey, I appreciate you. I appreciate the, the understanding. Be gentle. Use terms like grace, mercy. I need your help. I need your guidance. I need your wisdom, right? Don't, don't just say, I can't do this. You, you need to give me an extension. No, you're, you're, you're not in charge. Don't, don't, don't be dogmatic that way. Be, be humble. Be thankful. I so appreciate. Thank you so much. Um, maybe there's some, some final thoughts. Uh, you know, there's, 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 there's some other things that you uh, forgot to mention. You, know, you can, re, um, you can uh, put that in, the, in your concluding statements as well. Now, outlining is very important in this. I always like to, to number the things I'm asking for in an email. That way, when somebody looks at it, they, they know immediately, okay, my eyes are going to be drawn to, I have three questions for you. I, I, you know, here are my three questions. So somebody can go back and, and, you know, hit an automatic reply and reply to those three key points or key uh, three statements. One of the things that you're going to learn is that you need documentation. So let's let's use this as the example that you you know you're going to be uh, late on your World War One paper, and you're asking the professor or the teacher for grace, and you know you're going out of town. Okay, so you're going to send that email on Wednesday because you know you're going to be out of town on Friday, but you haven't heard anything from. From, from the teacher. So you go out of town, you're going to come back in, walk in the door on Monday, and can you turn your paper in on Monday now or not? 
Well, you want to have that documentation that that you did send it on Wednesday before it was due so that you're not again coming in with just this excuse of I didn't do it. I didn't feel like doing it. Here's my paper late type of a situation. No, you want to have documentation on that documentation. Uh, it, it becomes what's called time stamped. Time stamped. It shows that on Wednesday at eight in the morning that you sent it. You were hoping to get a response before Thursday because you were leaving town Friday. So it's you're not saying it's their fault, but it's at least showing that you have some some evidence, some proof and confirmation that you did try, that you did put forth the effort. A lot of times things will happen and you know, maybe you don't hear anything for a couple weeks, right? And you've forgotten and you're not even sure and you don't know exactly what you said and whether you sent it on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, it's 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 a little foggy. And maybe maybe they do say, oh yeah, if if the weather caused a problem, then everybody's gonna have grace until Monday. But you know what? I didn't hear anything from you. It's like, oh no, look, look here. See, I sent it on Wednesday. Here's my proof. So time stamped is a, is a good uh, a good reason to send emails and, and to to be clear. It becomes becomes a really good filing system as well. One of the things I like to do is after a phone call, an important phone call that, that I want to document, that I, that I want to stamp, uh, time stamp and that I want to have a proof is I'll send an email, uh, you know, dear Mr. So-and-so, thank you so much for showing me grace, being able to turn in my World War I paper on Monday because, you know, my family's going out of town you know, because I have a, uh, a a track meet on the weekend, I really appreciate you being, you know, agreeing to let me turn the paper in on Monday. Now you have it filed, you have it time stamped, you have it organized in, in, its, in your computer. So this is an example of how and why we use plural noun proposition papers for emails.